Welcome to the Center of Light Radio with spiritual teacher, intuitive, musician, composer, and best-selling author of The Divine Principle, Anchoring Heaven on Earth, your host, Keith Anthony Blanchard. Coast to coast, pole to pole, all around the world on the internet, thanks to the marvel of technology, I'm coming at you live from my little old guest house in Memphis, Tennessee. This is Keith Anthony Blanchard, and you're listening to Center of Light Radio, Center of Divine Enfoldment and Reinforcement Radio for the Soul and the Transformation Station, my RPM program, my lifelong work, or your spiritual seeker who's ready to move forward in your life. If you're wanting to shift from struggling to feeling that life is effortless, send me an email to book a free session with me, 30 minutes for free, at least 30 minutes. It can go a little longer. I don't mind. We'll get you well on your way. Give me an issue or something you want to see greater in your life, to greater capacity, something expanded, something that might be kicking your butt. You want a little bit more uh, ease surrounding that. Contact me, Keith Anthony Blanchard at Gmail. We'll get right down to it, and we'll get you on your way to feeling groovy. If you go to centeroflightradio.com, on the opening page, you'll see a Ferrari whiz across the screen. Click on that car. Also, you can click on Rev Me Up, and it'll take you to the RPM program. It'll tell you what you get, and it will also show you what you will create with this lifelong work of mine, recognize, plug in, and manifest. When we begin to recognize the truth, we look within. We begin to plug into that power source, what lives inside of all of us, creates worlds and universes. Chew on that for a moment. <laughs> what lives inside of us creates worlds and universes. When you begin to plug into that, then you begin to manifest your life. We all manifest our life, but this time we get to do it on purpose and consciously. and We get exactly what we want, exactly what we desire. That which calls to us and makes our hearts sing and makes us feel blissful. Then everybody around you says, what are you doing? Please give me some of that. And they become blissful and it becomes a worldwide movement and everybody's eating ice cream <laughs> and the whole world is joyful. Very, very simple. And you can be a powerful part of someone else's trans- transition for sure. Uh, announcement. If you've been listening to Center of Light Radio for a while or following any of my work, again, go to centeroflightradio.com. On the opening page, you'll see a sign-up form. Fill it out. I will send you all of my work to a present day over a period. It's all free now. Things I used to charge for in the past, I'm giving it to you for free. Sign up. And not only would you get that stuff, that cool stuff, because I'm always creating stuff. Uh, I'm going to start a monthly, uh, maybe not monthly, bi-monthly uh, ongoing newsletter program. Again, I've just been overwhelmed and swamped by a lot of work. I'm about to get moving and busy with that. <clears throat> also today, very, very important announcement. This God Realized man from India contacted me two weeks ago uh, through a dear friend of ours. And she said, Swamji said, it's time to get busy. The world is slack. The p- humanity, people are slacking off. And next thing you know, he says that uh, he wanted me to create a Facebook page called Clean and Green Mission Now. So you go to Facebook.com slash Clean and Green Mission Now. This is not a regular community page where people hang out and chit chat about some cool stuff. This is about finding solutions to the problems that are plaguing the world. There's an epidemic, there's a pandemic, and it's getting out of hand. So much so, this man who knows the fact that I'm talking about him right now, if he wanted to know that, he has this kind of awareness. Contact me and said, Keith, get on this. So I'm getting on it and I'm sharing this with you. I'm asking you to go to this page and bring forth solutions. Let's not blame those people in other arenas who may be contributing to the problem. That's not what this page is about. This page, this page is about bringing solutions, solutions, so we can begin the dynamic of change because he doesn't speak about things lightly. In fact, the word he used was urgent. And next thing you know, two weeks later, we have this smog that shows up in India, in New Delhi. This is not good. This is not doom and gloom, and this is not fear-based prophecy. What I'm saying is it's a wake-up call saying, hey, guys, it's a clarion call is what it is. So we need to step up and begin to beat our feet towards pitching in. Yes, recycling is a wonderful thing. Please keep doing that. But it's beyond that, and we need to catch up. Again, that's facebook.com slash clean and green mission now. Share that with everyone you know. Let's get down to center of light radio business. Dow 888-919-2355, 888-919-2355 to call into the show today. My guest is Jennifer Foster, highly recommended by Gavin uh, Lee Davies, I believe. Give me a sip of water, excuse me. <clears throat> Said, please get this lady on your show. It would be a perfect fit. So Jennifer Foster is here today, and we're going to be speaking about the energy dynamic model, human nature and modern society. 
Jennifer says, I've developed a way of understanding people that can be used to improve well-being. Well-being. That's a big word, and, and it's all-inclusive. When I worked at, at Cathedral Employment Enterprises, this was the job that opened my eyes and created a lifelong passion for developing people through employment and creativity. I've delivered a standard course to over 2,000 unemployed people with all sorts of different situations and abilities over time. It's a period of two years. I was made redundant when the government changed the contract terms. I spent most of my free time, I spend most of my free time educating my third child who is six years old, which I enjoy very much, of course he does. I also love to develop projects and I am working on, my reading is not here today, excuse me, on one at the moment to do with voice and performing skills with people who are vulnerable. I also support my eldest son and a friend in running their two businesses in art and enjoying networking and facilitating exhibitions for them. My first love is theater and how people work today. And I am often thinking about plays, writing, and ideas. You can find more about my guests at www.energydynamic.co.uk. Jennifer Foster, welcome to Center of Light Radio. Hello, Keith. Thank you very much for having me here. Absolutely. How do you want to dive into this thing? Tell me, when did everything begin to shift for you? Was this an early age? You always had a vision of doing this kind of work, or was it something that was when you painted in a corner and you had no way out except to try something completely different, what was that like for you? Well, it all really started when I was very, very young. I, I remember walking down the road uh, holding holding my mum's friend's hand. So I must have been about five or six probably. And um, she was called Auntie Pat. And I remember having a sort of mischievous child moment. Um, and I said to her, I said, um, who are you? And she said, well, I'm your Auntie Pat. I'm your Auntie Pat. I said, no, no, no. Who are you? And she said, I'm your Auntie Pat. And when I realized that, and she really meant it, I, I kind of had a feeling of what's going on here. I, I didn't mean that. I, I didn't actually mean that. I meant kind of, kind of, who are you? And what she gave me was her name. Um, from that moment, I... I realized that I was seeing things possibly in a different way to most people, but that was okay. And I carried on and everything was, was all right. But I always, um, I always had a, had a idea that things weren't quite what they seemed, I guess. Um, later on in my life as a teenager, I joined theater. I, I discovered the theater and I absolutely loved it. And I found that when I was on stage, it was a completely different experience to the usual normal routine life. And you actually were in a completely different, having a different experience of life. After that, I um, decided to study. And I didn't really know what to study. And to cut a long story short here, by a bit of peculiarness, I ended up doing um, a degree in economics. And I had never even done an O-level or an A-level in economics at all. And I remember sitting in a lecture um, and um, the man said this, this in this lecture, he, he said, um, economics is the study of why people um, make BMWs rather than kidney machines. And um, I thought I want to know about that. So I, I thought I'm going to pursue this. And then I found out that I was actually on the wrong course. <laughs> They'd put me on the wrong course. But I was going to stay on it. So so I then studied economics for about, I did a degree, then I did a master's degree. Um, it was all of probably about six years. And it was designed particularly not so much to, to learn about economics so you could work in the financial sector, but to analyze it and to, to criticize it and to, to get to the essence of what economics was and what that meant for development. And it was at this point when I, I saw that economics was actually a game. It was actually um, a big game, basically. So with the who are you scenario, with the theatre and then the economics, um, when, I, when I left that, I started work, and that's what you were just reading about, really, um, with long-term unemployed people in um, Brixton in London. And from that moment, probably for the next 10, 12 years, I started to see in people that I was working with how they actually were 
they actually were beautiful and they were they were they were just them their essence was them and they were just shining but they couldn't see that and no one could see that and they were they were given labels of 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 being angry or being difficult or or you know lots of different things and and what i did was i i realized that if I could nurture them in, in the situation I was in, given what situation I was, like sometimes I was on a course, sometimes I was supporting people with just learning difficulties in a job. If I could get the hang of who they were and if I could get the hang of what gave them meaning, purpose, who they were, and so they could like create that and be that, all their mental health problems and attitudes and anger and anxiety reduced and this carried on and carried on, and, and by by 10, 12 years, I was in quite a senior position, project managing staff, moving people in London to the next step of training. And there were some people that I, I found in colleges that had been doing the same course for 10 years, same course over and over again. And when I questioned this, and I said, well, why, why are they still doing the same course? The, the tutors would say, who were you know incredibly well-intentioned and, and, and lovely people, um, they would say, well, they can't do anything else. And I said, well, of course they can. If they can do one course, they can do any course. And they were saying, no, they can't. They've got this issue. They've got that issue. And I said, but but they need to, if they understand who they are, they'll be able to make an informed choice and then do their thing and then they will feel better and then everything will get better. And they said, well, no. And I said, okay, I'll show you how. So I started to deliver my own course to people like that. And at the end of the, of the courses, they all told me, they gave me an informed choice on what they wanted to do. And then I arranged them to do it. And I had tens and tens of people transforming simply because they were removed from a situation that did not value or support them or allow them to manifest themselves into a situation where they could. And they completely changed completely changed and then later on um when i moved to wales i went self-employed i worked with families with abuse issues i worked um with children i worked with business coach um, with businesses i worked with spiritual people and i kind of started to see a huge pattern and i also had done some work with mental health and round about the time when i was probably 40 so that was what like 25 years I suddenly saw it all as a huge pattern and I suddenly saw what it was, was where and how people got their energy from. And I, I, I kind of plotted it basically and I found that there was three different ways people get their energy from and two different kind of um, ways this is shown, which I can tell you about if you like. Um, and if you know, and I call that your energy dynamic, and if you know what your energy dynamic is, you can then understand how you are, understand who you are in a very practical way, and then shift so you're getting your energy from what you were referring to earlier, Keith, from, from the place that is who you are what you're created for and can start to, to manifest that in a way where you're not trying your being and you start to create that your mind calms down and everything becomes what I call quite magical so by knowing your energy dynamic you then understand and what was subconscious or possibly even unconscious becomes conscious and then can, everything shifts can you give me an example a pseudo example metaphorical example, something that actually happened of course don't mention their name of how something was out of balance with someone and, and I see you and from what you described, you're a catalyst. You're the person that is just being there allows others to make things happen. So can you give me an idea of a scenario that you had with a client yeah. and brought them to uh, full circle into uh, moving their feet towards betterment? Yeah, I'll tell you, I'll tell you, um, I'll tell you a story. I mean, I have, I have hundreds, but I'll tell you one that, that taught me a lot because one fantastic thing about working with people with a learning difficulty um, was that they they tell you as it is. They they tell you what it is, and they just do. Okay. <laughs> and um, and this particular lady, I was um, I was working in the in the social services department as a project manager, and um, there was this lady. And my job, as I said, was to to make sure people did well in employment. And they had this lady in the council social services department. 
And they said, oh, you must come and sort her out. And um, I said, well, what, what's happening? And they said, she's twirling. She's twirling. She's stressed. She's noisy. She won't do her work. And it's dreadful. And you have to come and manage her. You must come and manage her. <laughs> so um, I said, OK. So I went down to, to have a look. And this lady um, had the uh, label description of autistic. And, um, and she also had a slight learning difficulty. Anyway, I observed her for about, I don't know, 10 minutes and obviously to me obviously the whole situation was wrong the whole situation was wrong she was in this open plan office everyone was behind a computer screen doing all this you know like this and and and, and she she just didn't like it and because she didn't like it she was twirling and all her her uh, mind and and grief was taking over and it was all um sort of quite quite disturbing for everyone so I said, well, I'm, I'm going to change your placement. And they said, oh, no, you can't do that. She's your issues. You must control her. And I said, well, no, I'm not going to do that because she's in her own place. That is the problem. And until you have her in a good place, you can't even begin to see what's actually happening. So anyway, after a bit of toing and froing, I managed to, to, to sort of yank her out of there. And I stuck her on this course I designed and found out about who she was. Found out she loved recycling. Found out she was very social. And what she also used to do, every time she used to come into the office, she used to go, hello, Jennifer, how are you? Hello, Jennifer, how are you? And then she'd tell me a bad joke. And then she'd go to the next person. And this was her way of, of being. And, and, and she was happy and delightful and funny and friendly and, and, and all this. So I found that out about her on this little course. Then we put her, as we did everyone, in a little voluntary, voluntary job find out her learning style, find out, again, exactly what, what she liked and, and, and how she worked. And then what we did was to find someone a suitable placement, and we found the perfect placement, which was working in the project in, in Hackney, where everyone was in pairs, so because she needed support, everyone was in a pair, so she wasn't the odd one out. The job was to knock on people's doors saying, hello, Mrs. Jones. Can I have your recycling? <laughs> Which she loved. So every day she was there knocking on the door with her partner who accepted her completely because everyone was in pairs, knocking on those doors, her learning style, her who she was, her how she expressed herself. Hello, Mrs. Jones, can I have your recycling? Told a bad joke, moved on, next door. Hello, there you go. Happy as Larry. Because she <laughs> felt better and in my model she'd shifted into feeling who you are yeah she'd shifted down because she was able to express that and she was be able to create that life around her where which way she was valued and when you say excuse me when you say yeah. shifted down do you mean she shifted from her mind yes. the, the monkey mind the ooh, ooh, yeah. uh, uh, the part of this that dictates us what we should shouldn't better yeah. better not all those things and she actually fell into her heart space where all the good stuff is is that what you mean yeah, I've got a little oh, diagram. Can I show you, Keith? Can I show you my diagram? Absolutely. I love it. <laughs> right, here we go. Um, I've done a little little thing because this is easy for me. I did all this with stick men. This is how I kind of worked it out, really. If, um, here you go. This is a person. This is this lovely lady. Okay. <laughs> that are. looks like me. <laughs> <laughs> they are. Um, I worked out, and we could talk about this endlessly, and this is all in my books, but basically there's three ways of finding your energy and your um, information, spirit, mind, now, I don't call it heart. I call it feel. It's like in your gut, feel, intuition, love is in kind of go with me, go with me, yeah, in your feel. It's where you feel peace, yeah. Mind is, is emotion. and But you also carry grief in your feel, which is connected to the mind. But that's another story, okay? So if we assume there we are, okay, next step, here you are. So this lady, is that all right? Can you read that all right? Yeah, this lady went into her field and that's where who you are lives. That's where who you are lives. And that's where doing and being and, and, and just being an animal in this three dimensional place lives. So because fact, you went that location right there is where the sacral chakra is, yes, which has to do absolutely. with creating. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. So completely agree. So she'd gone from mind to feel, okay, she started to feel stronger. And because she was getting more energy from there, guess what? She didn't need so much mind. She didn't need so much approval. She didn't need so much status. She, she didn't. She didn't need it because she felt better. Yeah. 
And then the next thing, I'll, sleep, I'll park her for a minute, but this is um, what we were talking about earlier. The next step is, which is all to do with alchemy, the magic of the human being, okay, is when you bring your spirit, here you go, sorry, your spirit, okay, into your feel. So you bring it down where there's no time, no space, because it's all everything everywhere, yeah, absolutely existing everywhere, into 3D planet Earth, where there is time and space, and how do you do that? By being who you are and following love. And then your mind becomes irrelevant because you're getting your feel and your information from there, okay? I've got a little bit more on that, but before I go into a lecture, so what happened to this lady was because she was allowed to be who she is, she understood who she was, and she kind of went down, and you could call that spirit because that's what she was created for, she was being that, yeah, yeah. So rather than going up into spirit, you're bringing it right down. You're bringing Completely. it completely, right even though they sound the same, they are not. Absolutely. Oh, well, they're you not. You leave here, but you need to come down and be and create and show love. And if you go up, there's nothing wrong. There's no right and wrong here. But if you go up, you leave here by definition. And I've got another little little fun way of explaining that, if you like. Um, yeah, but back to that lady. So she was happy as Larry, family happy, mental health got better, not cured, obviously, but better and happy days. And that, that that's happened over and over and over again. So I started to become very, very um, aware and 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 back to sort of me, really, what kept me doing all this, because, you know, it's been a very sort of long, hard journey is because of the injustice, really, because I would just see these people and. They were being treated for their mind issue by most mainstream, well-intentioned people, um, and they weren't being shown who they who they were and allowed to 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 be and to to follow love, basically. Um, so that's an example. I can uh, talk more about that, but I could tell you another little way of understanding the idea. By the way, like. that was a very powerful example. Everything you said I already know, but seeing yeah. it in the form of this stick man and seeing yeah. the process with my eyes and taking it in that way, even in a stick man form, really did wonders to your explanation of that. In fact, it hit the chat room so well, they're starting to throw questions up. And when people start throwing up questions in the chat room, they're digging what you're bringing forth because now they want to milk you for what you got to offer. Uh, <laughs> can, can we? I'd love to ask you a question from Adriana in the chat room. Is that okay with you? Oh, cool. Yeah, absolutely. I can Adriana remember. asked a question. Does Jennifer feel... Uh, does she feel her education gave her a better understanding of how to connect with people? My education? Um, not my education, no, to be honest. Um, my education told me a lot about economics and philosophy, which was so valuable because as soon as I understood that, I saw it for what it was. I became aware of it. So I understood that just because something had a value of a money price, you know, the money of the money, money type thing, I saw that it was a big game, which which is quite hard to see in Western society. But because I'd studied it at that level, I was able to have the confidence because I had the knowledge to kind of like stand my ground and feel strong in the knowledge I had to back that up. So I guess that did help me to communicate with people um in that way yes so yes it did help me to communicate with people <laughs> so so that example you gave earlier and also going through the diagram on paper but also explaining where a person can sit yeah. in their consciousness yeah so yeah. when you help people we, we just call you the catalyst <laughs> when you help people <laughs> shift into yeah. their essence or at least yeah. more into their essence it's not like you have to fix this problem with that person, fix this problem. It's not you have to address all these different things. It's yeah. that when you help someone sit into the seat of who they really are, the trickle effect begins to happen. And every area of their life becomes affected by the one consciousness shift. Would that be correct? That Absolutely, because they can Love see. It. They they can see. it. It's I used to say, I am the framework. I give you the framework. And then they take that framework, and it's like it's like peeling an onion because it's a quite uh, again. I'm sure you know, Keith. It's quite a, it's quite a, it's quite a grieving process because as people do shift, and they go down, and they start to feel better, 
what happens is I, I, I say it's like a goldfish bowl of sparkling water here in your stomach area. It's like water, sparkling water, which is full of peace. But in that, you carry little bottles of grief. And that's a little bit like Coca-Cola. Little bottles of grief, you carry it. Now, when you start to feel better, you get more sparkling water and then the grief empties. Now, in healing, that's called letting go, okay? Um and the bottles of grief empty. And as the bottles of grief empty, again, your mind calms down because you'll have a trigger up there. Because the bottles of grief empty, your mind becomes less triggered. But you experience grief because you're finally kind of crying out the, the grief you're carrying. So that would be kind of like round one, you know. Um, and then they would shift, then they would see, then they'd do something else, then they'd be round two. And it takes up to what I found four rounds to actually kind of like start to identify the rhythm. And it, it goes like this. It goes it goes like that. So although you, though you're, you do feel better, you do feel better, emotionally you go up and down because every time you feel better, your bottles of grief empty, yeah, you feel grief. And you think, oh, no, oh, no. Then you come through it, and then you can see even more clearly. And that that's quite a quite an experience for someone. So why do you think people grieve? Let me ask you this. Why do people consistently choose to grieve? Do you think it's because, let's say, for example, they lost someone in their life, be it in a loving relationship, be it in a relationship, or someone in the family? Do you think that they grieve because, well, one, absolutely it hurts. It's a kick in the groin. It's a kick in the solar plexus. It's a punch in the heart when life changes at a split. But do you think it's because, let's use the example, the death of a loved one, that if I don't allow myself to grieve in some way, I'm insinuating that I don't care. If we let that loved one go, I no longer in I care about this person mode. What are your thoughts about that? Okay, normally, normally, this is my little diagram. This is your sparkling water, okay? Normally, people say say they have that much sparkling water, okay? Now, if they get lose a loved one, that's a huge, what I call minus feel. That's a big, big feel, bad, bad feel, yeah? Now, if that goes into your feelings, if you haven't got enough sparkling water to to, to, to deal with that, because your brain will have a set limit and everyone's limit is different. So that's point number one. Everyone has a different set. Some people need that much. Some people need that much. OK, so it will be stored in a bottle. So there's some bottles of grief. Oh, sorry. There's some bottles of grief. OK, now those bottles of grief will not empty until you are feeling strong enough to empty them. OK. And until someone feels better, that, that's also why time is said to be a great healer. Because over time, you can build up your feels and eventually those bottles will empty. Or sometimes the bottles get buried in what I call the sand and then you're not aware of them anymore. But that is the cause of lots of anger and anxiety. Um, it's actually from a bottle of grief from a loved one, but actually it's so hidden because it's so buried um, it affects the mind and it's anger and anxiety. So the, the the short answer is because they haven't got enough good feels. They haven't got enough good feels. And the thing with Keith, I've, I've been listening to some of your shows, and one of the things that does give you a good feel is knowledge, because if you know something, you can then do it and be it, and you feel better because you're in you're in the feel zone, yeah. And if you know that your loved one is somewhere else and is safe, that will make you feel better. Yeah. So your feels will go up. So you're more likely to allow that grief to empty. If that makes sense. Do you think it's a motivation factor kind of thing? Someone being motivated, I lost my love. For example, some people I've worked with in the past, they lost someone. And I get it. I couldn't begin to imagine what it would like to be lose your child or anyone that's close to you. And I understand, like I mentioned before, the impact of the initial news, the, the news that comes to you when such a thing happens. Yeah. But the people I've worked with in the past, Jennifer, it's like – they go through a grieving period and they, they ask me, Keith, what can I do to move through this? Like I, like I mentioned, first understand that they're not gone. They have not died. They're not lost. Yeah. And that it's a bring to the table something that will motivate them. 
Do you really miss them? Of course they miss them. That's why in this, they're in this grieving period. So now I offer them the idea that if you can let go or move through the grief, What's on the other side for you is visiting with them consciously again. So it seems to motivate some people to say, oh, my God, you're saying that if I follow these ideas that you're offering, that I can begin to connect consciously with the person that left as to why I'm grieving. Mm. And I'll say, absolutely. And they implement some of the ideas I bring forth and they contact me in the future saying, oh, my gosh, I had so and so visit me last night. Do you think it was real? I said, Do you think it was real? That's the point. Absolutely, I'm going to absolutely now. Do you know I showed you this diagram here? Yeah, with a spirit yes. here. Yeah. Yes. Now, if someone, if you, if if someone can connect to spirit and go up, yeah. What people? Let's pretend people need ten units of energy a day to live off. Okay. Yeah. Now, if they're feeling bad, that would be a low score. Mind, say I don't know. Say it. Say it's five. Yeah. So they've got very low energy. They've just got five feeling bad, five from their mind, so they need ten. Now, if you can offer them a way of connecting to spirit, yeah, and then they get maybe one unit, two units, maybe three units from it, they will immediately have more energy. They will immediately have more spark because they've gone from five units to eight. Yeah? Understood. So, yeah, now there's two other ways people get energies from the feel zone. One is an escape world and one is other people. Okay, now in grief, right, so sorry about this. The OP is other, <coughs> other people and the escape is things like drink, drugs and all that sort of stuff. But you can get plus feels from other people or animals or dogs or something. Do you know what I mean? So you could also get your energy up by loving something else yeah and just being open to that idea yes that you can love your cuddle your dog cuddle your child cuddle you, you know so so it's about getting your energy levels up which you're telling them how to do it which is fantastic but the reason that they start to experience life in a better way is because they basically got more energy basically totally understood 888-919-2355 triple eight nine one nine two three five five it's the number you dialed to come on center of light radio on the air with myself and or miss jennifer foster who i'm really taking this conversation jennifer with the bottom of the hour boy it's amazing how time does not exist when you're having a blast isn't it (laughs) (laughs) would you be so kind to give out your contact information to your listening our listening audience so they can find out more about you and those little stick people you got going on right so what did you want me to do? <laughs> Announce how our listening audience can find you so they can get more right. in, in your work. Right, Beautiful well, work, powerful work. I've got a website called um, www.energydynamic.co.uk. And from that website, you can um, have a look at my blogs, um, my videos. I've got a YouTube video called YouTube channel called Energy Dynamic. Um, and I've also got some free online courses that you can join from my website, too, to find out more about um, understanding the mind. And also for children, I've got lots of stuff to nurture children. So it's www.energydynamic.co.uk. Today, I'm coming forth to tell you about my lifelong work, this brand new program. Wow. People are telling me all about what these teachings are doing for them. And I decided to sit down and put this all together in a package and offer to the public. RPM recognize plug in and manifest. Recognize the dynamic that's happening in the world. Plug into the dynamic that's happening within you. When we we'll bring these two together, the outer and the inner world, a third component begins to happen. And that's the phoenix within you that rises up through the murk, through the ashes of our own life. And we begin to expand. Explosive clarity is a powerful thing. Expanded awareness is a powerful thing. Giving you tools, giving you secrets, giving you some amazing wisdom and insights that I will be bringing to you through this RPM program that will help you manifest your life in a holy instant. I've been using these techniques all of my life. And dear Lord, let me tell you, they are powerful. And when you implement this in your life, not only will you be helping yourself to expand and have those things that you desire and deserve, everyone around you will say, what is it you're doing? Can you please share with me some of that? RPM, recognize and plug in and manifest your life. Go to KeithAnthonyBlanchard at gmail.com. Send me that email entitled, Keith, I want my free 30-minute session. 
and we'll get you on your way to an expanded, blissful, explosive, clarity lifestyle. Peace, love, and always remember. I have some questions in the chat room for you, dear. Okay. Striker asked, the, by the way, everyone in the chat room, chat room is full. Thank you very much. I appreciate you being here at Center of Light Radio. For those who are new to the show, the show airs every Monday night, 6 p.m. Eastern time. So tell your loved ones, everybody who needs a little bit of boost for their Monday energy fix, <laughs> which is pretty much what we're talking about. Uh, Striker asked a question. How do you recognize when you're in a toxic environment? Ah, Right. That is kind of like the question, isn't it? Yeah. Now then, um, there's a few ways. Now, it's a few ways. The first way is if you're very mind orientated, and I'm going to show you another diagram. Here's what I made earlier. Here you go. Right. Now then, most people in this modern society, because of various things like bad food, uh, television, computers, blah, 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 right? Media get stuck in their mind yeah now when you get stuck in your mind you forget about who you are okay look people do tend to sort of pop up to spirit but because they have to go up they can't kind of bring it down much so although it's okay it's not kind of like this sort of major oops <laughs> this major is that right yeah this major experience so if you're very in your mind if you're very in your mind, you're having to go into your mind to, to get good feels. So that's one way of telling telling if you're in a toxic environment. And you know if you're in your mind because mind energy is like fire. Now, do you remember I said feel energy is like water? Yeah, it's absolute. It's either light or it's like dark. Peace, grief, that's it. If you're in your mind, it's like fire. It's a very intense emotional experience. It's very short-lived OK, and you need more and more and more because it's relative it's, it's relative. So if you're always having to achieve something to, to, to sort of you just know you just you just know you're here. You could just it's literally feels like that you're in here and you're sort of processing life rather than being life. That's either because you've got a bad habit of being in your mind, which is very, very common. But just knowing this can sort it out. Just knowing this can sort that out because you suddenly become aware of, oh, I call it scoring a tick. When you're in your head, you score a tick. Yeah, I've won. It's like a fire bang. Yeah. Yeah. So if you're having to score lots of ticks and you get a bit twitchy when you don't get a tick, you're living through your mind. OK, now it's either, as I said, habit or it's because you're feeling a bit sad and because you're feeling sad you need to go in your mind and if you're feeling sad what i suggest you do is have a look at who you are and what you feel in your immediate environment and see where you're getting your bad feels from and then once you know where you're getting your bad feels from you can start to say no and a lot of the work I've done, I found out over and over and over again, it doesn't matter how many times you say yes, it's not about saying yes, it's about saying no. Because if you say no, you then keep your energy in, okay? And once your energy is in, because you're saying no, that's not safe, that's not safe, it kind of builds up, your, your goldfish bowl of sparkling fills fills up, and you start to be able to create, okay? But if you... Keep saying yes to ticks. You just get more and more cut off. Does that help? Completely. I love your examples. I love the way you create an image, even with your words. It's very easy to take in. It's very easy to process and like really get it immediately. Uh, from the chat room, Redstone asked a question. I hear that we use, I hear that we use animals to help us emotionally cope with tough times. What do the animals get in return? Oh, interesting. Interesting. Um, I, I personally don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I suppose it depends um, how you are with your animal. I mean, if the animal's happy, I, I guess they're, I guess the animal's happy with maybe, maybe animals are also being who they are in showing love and care. Maybe, maybe animals are, are that too, you know, and maybe that's what they're here for. Maybe that's what they're here for, to help us as people um do the alchemy 
that we can do of bringing the spirit into into ourselves and maybe the animals are yeah you can bet that if you're a good owner of a pet or an animal or a fur baby as they called him you can bet that animal loves you greatly and is yeah. joyful to be of service to you you can yeah. bet on that that's what they yeah. get from it it's a shake hands deal i would i would think so yeah 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 so how did these images this this way of processing and this stick people how did this all come to you is this something that you sat down and figured out and created these images and i'm assuming that the energy works this way so let's create this diagram or did this come to you in one big ball of wax and this epiphany this aha dear lord how did i stumble upon this i mean what was your way of discovering this well i don't know i I think i was just a bit strange um i mean from the 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 (laughs) five-year-old sort of uh, you know, who are you? Well, you know, I'm Auntie Pat, you know, um, who's lovely, la- lovely lady, lovely lady. I realised that I ha- I kind of had to figure things out. And, and um, I remember as a teenager starting to draw stick men to work out what was going on. I, you know, um, I suppose I would call myself, if I'm anything, is I'm an artist. And that's how, that's my art. My, my art is like, that. that's my art. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? But it's sort of like conceptual art, and and I in I've got a little shop, and I use ping pong balls, I use candles, I use I use um, bottles of Coca Cola to show people about how they're carrying their grief, and then I pour water in it and stuff to show the process. So, so, so I've always used the stick men, and but I tell you how I worked at anxiety because that that was a biggie, that that was a biggie. Because it was after I saw people, basically, Keith, to answer your question, I, I, I did it very, very gradually. That's why it took me so long, I think. And every person I met, I saw a different thing. I saw a different element. And the learning difficulty people showed me one thing. Mental health showed me another, especially about the mind. Business coaching showed me another mind, type of mind. The spirit people showed me the spirit relationship. And then I remember it was when I was doing business coaching. And, I, and, and there were some of my clients were anxious and some of them weren't. And what I did is I went into my mind. I went into my mind and I tried to be rational. And I remember I got down all my case because I, I kept everyone. I kept everyone. I had a little file for everyone over there, little stick men and all this sort of stuff. And um, I got them all out. I put them all out on the floor. And I thought, I'm going to find the pattern. I'm going to find the pattern. Why is that person anxious and why is it? I'm going to find it. And I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. I could not find the pattern. And I left it. And about a week later suddenly got it got it and i don't know did it did it come in one bang just one explosion of light like wow or was it coming increments i saw that pattern yeah i saw that pattern i saw that pattern but that's happened with a lot of stuff like like the um abuse pattern that the the when when you're in an abusive relationship that took me quite a long time to work out um every single element of the whole work took me a long time to work out you know because there, i had a rule I, I had a rule there cannot be any exceptions there cannot be any exceptions it always has to be true always 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 so every single it's about two and a half thousand people it was in the end every single person i ever studied in this way had to fit into the pattern so it's a graduate it's a bit like doing maths to be honest but the anxiety was a big one. When I when I found that pattern, that was a big one. So even there, even though there are differences, for example, in the mental arena, this person has this thing going on, this person has this thing going on. And that you cater to each one differently, or is there a common denominator regardless of what it is you're treating in the mental field with this person, that person, and so on and so on? There's a there's a the energy dynamic model framework, which is always true, but with anyone's mental health, there are three things I look at. I look at how is their feel getting on, where they're getting their feels from, okay, who they are, and that who they are is an element of that. So if someone is who they are and they are not in that arena where they can show that that's a bad feel, basically. So I look at I look at how they feel, okay. I look at the relationship they got with their mind, and that's really, really important because in this model, is there's an in this model there's an imaginary person who lives in your mind. Now, some people have many people in their mind. Interestingly, especially business people, 
a lot of business people I've met who are very successful have about 25 people in their head. And I used to do a lot of work with That's them. That's a lot of noise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But what I realized as well, which again is a little bit different to the usual, is that you need to work with your mind. You work with your mind. You make friends with them 25 people. And and one of my business <laughs> one, one of my one they, of my they are your close family. <laughs> They are. And one of my business people, what we did was we put them into tables, right? So they had their own little tables. And because it was all very busy, very noisy, what we did was create another person, a tea lady. He used to go around and give all these people <laughs> cups of tea every two hours. And guess what? His mind calmed down. Now, I don't know how it works, but it just works. So so I think it's the power of the imagination, which is another story. But anyway, um, so a lot of it is to do with the relationship you've got with your mind. And a lot of it is to do with 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 working with your mind and making friends with whoever's in there. You know, I, I actually had the same process occur to me a few years ago. I realized that my egoic mind, the chitter chattering, just it wanted something. It wants something, always wants something. And so I decided to befriend it. And I yeah. actually went through the process yeah. of shaking its hand and said, listen, yeah. you've been yeah. asking for this for a very long time and you've been griping about it. And until you give me silence, because obviously you can't get it, so I have to contact the this, this spirit part of myself to be able to do, to do that. Because if you could, you wouldn't be yammering in my ear all this time. Back yeah. off for a little while. Let me yeah. figure out this process. And when I get what you want, I'll be more than happy to hand it over to you. And I swear to you, I had a shift using this ritual a couple of times here and there off and on. Yeah. I would just go through this meditation and just truly make peace with that part of yeah, me absolutely. that's just been griping. Absolutely. It was, it's normally the third stage I do with people. And it's so interesting because everyone has an admin. I call it your admin assistant. Okay. Okay. It, it will be, it will be, it's completely separate to you. It could be, a, if you're a woman, it can be a man. If you're a man, it can be a woman. I've had people with animals in there. I've had one woman I worked with had, had like a kind of demon in there. And we worked with that demon and it turned into a human being with with claws or uh, fingernails. But they were communicating and they started to, 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 to get on. Now, I tell you the really, really, really important point here is that if if you were getting your, you know, we say you have 10 units of energy. If you're getting a lot of energy from your mind, OK, your admin will be in charge because they're responsible to keep you going. So they will be quite naggy, yeah, because they need to keep you going. And if you don't, they will press a button and emotionally control you normally through anxiety or panic, okay? They also give you a buzz when you score a tick, get some fire, yay, because that makes their job easier because they've succeeded. So what happens, and I talk about this in the book a lot, is when your alone feels, when you're feeling bad, your brain sacks you because you, you're not doing very well because you're feeling bad. So you're sacked, okay? And it tells the mind, your admin assistant, to take over control. So what should be a processor, your admin assistant should process information. You should be making the decisions and the creation. They just processing it. But what, that's how we're supposed to be. But what happens is, because we feel bad, because we're not manifesting our amazing stuff, our brain tells our mind to gather up the energy, yeah? Your mind takes control, and you'll run by other people's rules, because it's all about achieving stuff from outside sources. Totally get it. So the outside sources being instilled, rights and wrongs, holy Absolutely. blasphemous, good, bad, in, out, the world yeah. of duality. We're not seeking duality. In fact, we don't yeah. we don't have to do anything <laughs> we're already in it. So I totally we want to expand it. into the this broader place of being. Yeah. If if our brain and our mind is our business partner, we need to find a way to make them the silent partner, right? Absolutely. You need to do that. <laughs> Absolutely. And you do that by making friends with your admin. You make, as you said, hello, how are you? Hi, come down again. That's all you got to do. Now, sometimes, and sometimes, and this is really common, <laughs> bear with me. Sometimes people so like being up here. Yeah, they love all the achievement. They love it. They boot their admin out, okay, and lock them in the cupboard. So what happens is, Someone will say, well, I haven't got an admin because they're up there. They are up there. So, again, we've got to bring them down. We've got to bring them down. And then what happens? Their admin comes out. 
their admin comes out. So often when I work with a person, um, they will be their admin. So they have to come down, be in the truth and who they are and kind and humble. I talk a lot about being kind and humble, really important. But not just to people, but to your, to your admin. You need to be kind and humble and stop shouting at them. Stop telling them to do this, do that, and they'll stop shouting at you. <laughs> it really makes a difference. Wow. Today, my guest, Ms. Jennifer Foster, you are illuminating me, lady. Let me tell you, I'm loving the simple way that you've actually figured out a way of connecting the different parts of the self and bringing them into a state of harmony with themselves. Yes. Like you said, it's about getting, I say this all the time in many different ways for many different reasons, and it's implied in many different ways. Get out of the fight. Get out of the fight yes. with the world. Get get out of the racism. Get out of the terrorism. Get Absolutely. out of the politics. Get Absolutely. out of the drama. Get out of being addicted to misery because everything I said up to this point is all just an internal bickering. Hmm. Absolutely. That shattered people, like a mirror and creates many different forms of just incessant ongoing griping. Yeah, and people love it. And and what happens is I've got another little picture here, is, as I think I showed you earlier, is that when they do get stuck in their mind, they 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 literally because it's a different wavelength. I mean, without getting too too deep into it, spirit and feel are the same wavelength, okay, the same frequency, and mind is a different frequency. And because people are so tuned in, and we all we've all experienced this, if we've been at work busy, 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 it is hard to switch off. It's hard to to go down. Yeah? You just held up this piece of paper. If you would hold it up and open it. Yeah. You pointed to the crown chakra or the crown, and you said spirit, and you also pointed to the feeling, and you said spirit that they're the same. Now, when we look for it, when we try to find a wormhole in time and space, you know the paper trick. You fold in half, and you stick an ink pen right through it. Look what happens when you fold that paper. Absolutely, you've, you've, you've fold, you've <laughs> they that. become joined. Yes. Uh, the the yes. The, yes. The, yes. the solar plexus and yes. the crown becomes the, the stargate. Yes. Yeah, you're right. No, I, I did that. That's what that's what I do in a, in a workshop. So if your mind, you so you surprised only, I caught that. I'm impressed. I'm impressed. <laughs> right, Jesus. If your mind, you, you I, I actually say it's like dimensions because in mind, it, it, it's, it's rational. It's, it's just that's it. That's it. But if you manage to do spirit into feel, it goes fifth dimensional. So it's in the way we have to, we can't really buy, you can't bypass it. You can only go through it. You yeah. have to move through it because you can't bypass any issue. It's just going to follow you wherever you go. Yeah. The, the answer to everything. Well, the solution, the solution to everything. Yeah. No, the, the answer that one of the books is called the answer and it's all about minds. You're told that's the answer. You're told, you know, be successful, blah, blah, blah. Right. You're told that's the answer, but the solution is to make peace with your mind, your little admin, um, but basically to feel better because that solves everything because your energy goes up because you feel more. You don't need so many ticks. Once you reach a certain level, spirit automatically becomes you. It's an automatic process, yeah? It's an automatic process. And then your bottles of grief empty, because you can because you you can take it you can take it they can empty and it just goes into a very positive positive cycle because then other people see it they come to you and that's sort of the law of attraction and all that sort of stuff but it's basically the law of attraction is about your feel a lot of people think it's about your think it's not it's about your feel it's about your feel. And if you are in mind, you'll get mind. So people say, oh, right, well, I'm being really positive and I'm getting all the success, but I still feel rubbish. Well, yeah, because you're in that vibration. Whereas if you concentrate on your feel in a kind and humble way and show love, that will get bigger. That will vibrate and shine and other people will come. You just got to be a little bit aware, bit aware that it will also attract sort of um, other people, other dark possibly. So you need to do the no bit as well. But um, but generally speaking, keep yourself safe and just shine, and then all your energy comes from there and your mind calms down. But most people, are, are unfortunately, stuck in their mind. And as you said, and I'm very impressed, Keith, they're experiencing this very. <laughs> This very sort of like, you know, uh, processing uh, robotic way of life rather than doing the magic alchemy 
of the tube. Wow, and actually when you folded this <laughs> now, it, it did make a heart shape. Abraham Hicks says that when you're in the process of wanting uh, meditation, that you want to create something for yourself. Or even as you go throughout your day and you want to, you just want to leave this job. You no longer want this job. You want something better that fills your spirit. So what you do is as you go throughout your day and you're holding this vision and also this space um, of just visualizing and intending to have something better. Mm -hmm. When you find yourself going throughout your day, it, not in a feel good mode. Pull out a picture of someone you love, a child. Put on a piece of music that just moves you. Find an excuse to get back into feeling good and then begin your vision process from that place. Mm -hmm. Exactly what you're saying, but differently. Jennifer, yeah. sadly, we're at the top of the hour. <laughs> wow. Would you give us a, a final thought and also give us your contact information once again so our listener audience can find you into the rabbit hole, follow you into the rabbit hole and find more about what you're doing here? <laughs> Final thought. Well, um, the final thought is, I suppose, is that you can't go wrong if you're kind and humble. Kind and humble is the key. Kind and humble. Make friends with your mind. Start to understand who you are. Don't be afraid to say no and create peace, really. You, you can't really go wrong. And that's how you make your decisions and just keep going and keep going and keep going. That's what I would say. That's powerful. Give us your website, darling, and anything you may be uh, wanting to offer to the listening audience so they can find you and more about what you're doing. My website's www.energydynamic.co.uk. And if you go there, I've written two books. One is sort of the general idea of the energy dynamic model called The Answer. And the other one is a practical step-by-step -step how to do it, how to shift your energy dynamic. And it's called The Eye in the Storm. And there's some free online courses there, too, which you may enjoy. If you like the stick men, there's online courses with lots and lots of stick men and water and kind of fairly natural videos. So I well, do take a look and it'd be great to meet you if you do. Jennifer, what a phenomenal presentation you laid out here, dear. I'm, I'm going to listen back to this. Absolutely. Uh, there's a lots of uh, juicy morsels on there, and I'm going to go find them. I'm the kind of guy that when you say you saw something magnanimous under a rock yesterday, I'm not going to go look because I don't believe you. I'm going to go look because I want it. <laughs> right? So thank <laughs> yeah, you, dear, well, for a you. wonderful presentation. I really enjoyed it. Well, thank you so much for asking Absolutely. That door is open to you anytime, everyone. Miss Jennifer yeah. Foster. Thank you. Thank powerful, you powerful show. Uh, next week, I will not be doing a show due to the fact that I'm going to South Louisiana to see family. Christmas holiday is going to be coming up, as I do every year. I'm going to have a very powerful broadcast about my hyper um, lucid experiences with Yeshua. We know him as Jesus. And other things, really cool music. It's going to be made for a nice presentation. That's coming for the holiday season. Also, again, go to R, uh, if you want the RPM program, go to centeroflightradio.com. Click on that red Ferrari after it settles down. It'll take you to the page of my lifelong work, what you get and what you will create. A lot of the same of what Jennifer has brought here, but differently. I look forward to seeing you in a couple of weeks. My name is Keith Anthony Blanchard, your host of Center of Light Radio, every Monday night, 6 p.m. Eastern Time. I'm the captain of this mastership that sits in this chair and conducts all the affairs of the heart bringing all kinds of joy to your life that's what that's my gig i love seeing people illumined peace love and most amazing light in your life